Good morning, everyone. It's uh, Dr. Shiva Adure. It's a little bit after 9.30. I want to uh, talk about a very, very interesting incident that took place. And the title of the, uh, our talk today is NYU fires chemistry professor after students whine his class is too hard. And so we want to talk about this because it's a fascinating uh, set of events that just recently took place. It was yesterday that was revealed in a bunch of the media that the an NYU professor gets fired um, because a bunch of students said that his class was too hard. And I think it's important to talk about this because it really gets down to uh, what's going on with our educational system, but more importantly, also uh, truth and freedom and health. It's, it's an excellent uh, example. And uh, here's a picture of that professor. You can see him right there, this uh, Maitland. His name is Maitland Jones. And he was a professor at one of my alma maters in some sense, NYU, which is when I was 14. As many of you know, I went to school there in a special computer science program. And this guy gets fired um, because uh, 80 students signed a petition saying that his class was too hard. 80 out of, I think, 300 some odd students. And the interesting thing is that university is the one that dismissed him. He was a professor at Princeton University. I think a tenured professor of organic chemistry, and he'd written one of the classic textbooks on organic chemistry. And then in his retirement, um, he uh, was on contract. You see, uh, some universities hire uh, p uh, professors or lecturers on contract. I was a lecturer at MIT uh, for a couple of years on contract, though I was working full time. And I did it for very, very low cost because I enjoyed teaching. And there are a lot of people who do that because they just enjoy teaching. So, anyway, Maitland Jones was teaching at uh, NYU, an organic chemistry class. And uh, this is uh, apparently the quote unquote pandemic had an effect on these students. And the story goes that um, his classes during the pandemic were available online and, as, uh, and some students were finding it hard. Um, and then post pandemic, he himself created 54 or 50 some odd video lectures of his course to even make it more interesting and more accessible for students. So students could go through the normal model of learning or the uh, a much more creative model, which he created. Now, what's interesting is those of you who don't know what organic chemistry is, um, organic chemistry is key to really becoming a good doctor in many ways. It's, it's one of the uh, prerequisite pre-med requirement courses. It's um, you learn how nature, for example, or your body or everything inside and outside of you um, transforms chemicals from one state to another. And there's various chemical processes. And it's a really, really cool course. Um, and you have to work hard. It's not an easy course. It's one of the toughest courses. And it's used to get rid of students who actually aren't good, right? It's sort of like a, a, a course that decides, well, you really want to go into medicine or not, you know? Now, 80 of the 300 some odd students got, uh, were whining that the class was too hard. In fact, the average grade in the class was like a 30, okay? So um, the students um, and, and Maitland Jones, uh, who is sort of your traditional teacher, was concerned that students weren't really learning or putting their effort into really working hard. And so um, uh, these students, instead of working hard or overcoming their difficulties, uh, started whining about this, signed a petition and get him fired. Now, why did the university dismiss it? In fact, the, some of the students were never thought it would lead to a firing. Why did the university dismiss it? And I'll come back and talk about that. Let me just take a quick um, aside here to let everyone know that everyone knows that all the analysis we do here comes from a perspective that we share on vhshiva.com. It takes a systems approach. So go to vhshiva.com if you want to find more. But one of the systems of knowledge, education, like organic chemistry that we've created is a system uh, called Truth, Freedom, and Health. And Truth, Freedom, and Health, you can actually learn how to get street smart, look beyond left and right and pro and anti. And you have to put some effort into this system. You get as much as you put in. So I encourage everyone to go there the slogan is get educated or be enslaved. But we really, at this course, interconnect truth, freedom, and health. 
And when you look at what just happened to this guy, Maitland Jones, um, a professor has to have the freedom to say, here are the standards. This is what we need to do, right? Or this is the, like a master in karate. You have to achieve this level to get a, a, a black belt and you have to achieve this, you know, this level is a brown belt. Um, there are basic skills you have to learn. Um, and without that freedom, you don't get to truth. You know, you can't practice science. You don't get to health. And here, a professor has set a very high standard. The students and the university cut him out because they don't want to work hard, frankly, in my view. And I'll talk more about this when we come back after this quick video I'll play. So ultimately, what this is going to do is affect the quality of pre-med students or medical um, doctors that you get. And it's going to affect all of our health. Let me just play this quick video so all of you get inspired on what Truth Freedom Health is about. And then we'll be back in literally uh, two minutes. We have allowed our country to be taken over from within. And the end goal is you will have a homogenized world where we will become slaves because there is a condition among the elites that really thinks they're better than you. Deep down inside them that you don't deserve the freedoms you have. They don't. This reality is what people need to wake up to. And we need to all unite working people. There's only one movement that can do that. Mm -hmm. And that is the movement that we started creating here in Massachusetts, the movement for truth, freedom, and health. Look, I've been a student of politics since I was a four-year-old kid, studying revolutionary movements, left wing, right wing. There is a physics, there's a nuclear science to destroying the establishment. To build a bridge, you need to understand Newton's equation. You need to understand the laws of gravity. You need to understand Poisson's ratio. There is a way to build a revolution. And that's why I put this together. My goal is to train a army of truth, freedom, and health leaders. We don't need followers like social media. We need leaders, but they, they need training because the educational system does not teach them history, nothing. So in three hours, that's what I've started doing. That's the solution. We wow. got to train people. First, with understanding what a system is. The second is understanding the interconnection between truth, freedom, and health. Freedom is the ability to move freely, communicate freely, right? Talk freely. Without freedom, you cannot convert ideas, hypothesis, into truth, which is science. And without freedom, you can't really get to truth. And without truth, you make up fake problems and fake solutions, which means you destroy our health. And without health, which is the infrastructure of us and our body, you can't fight for freedom. Third concept is it has to be bottoms up, working people, people who work uniting. And what the right wing has done is whenever you say working people unite, that must be communist. Meanwhile, they've let the Democrats run unions, which suppress workers, completely corrupt. But when you look at the arc of American history, it's been when working people came up. We need to go local. Every solution I'm coming up with as a part of this movement, we're giving the science, which is the truth, and then we tell people what they can do on the ground. Like with election fraud, you don't need to wait for some lawyer. Our goal is to train people, Dave, to go local, to go local, to go local, fight locally. Forget lawyers, forget politicians, forget celebrities. You've got to learn politics, and there is a science to it. They lock us down, we should be ready to shut them down. And the fourth part of this principle is a not so obvious establishment. So when you look at a system, there's always something that disturbs you from getting to your goal. Well, the biggest disturbance is a not so obvious establishment which are those people who claim they're for you, on the left and the right, the Al Sharptons who tell black people I'm for you, the Tucker Carlsons. Do you think any true anti-establishment person will ever be on Fox or CNN? I don't think so. They both mislead working people back into the establishment. Without this solid understanding of political physics and theory, you're screwed. You're gonna follow on the, the left wing, Bernie Sanders, oh, he said something, or Robert Kennedy, scumbags or you're gonna follow you know, some right-wing talk show host. They're not gonna lead us to liberation, it's us. And that political physics, it's a nuclear science of change. Bottoms up. We have to organize to understand that there is people who talk a good game and then look at what they actually do, left and right. I'm sorry, Sean Hannity may say some good things, but I don't see the urgency in his voice to get something done. And it can only come when you weaponize yourself with the right knowledge. You need to be able to identify a rat you know, Christ didn't go after the Romans, right? It was the Pharisees and the Sadducees who screwed him up. His own quote unquote people. And that's where we're at. So these four concepts I've built into a curriculum. People can go to bashiva.com and it's an educational program. We need to train people in political theory. You need to have physics. 
And I've created that curriculum. People need to get educated. We need to get educated fast. And within a half an hour, an hour, I can teach people two years of MIT control systems. I teach people those concepts. Then I apply it. Anyone can understand it. And then you say, oh, I got to build a bottoms up movement. They have to get politically astute and then they have to go locally and act, not sit there on social media. They have to act locally, defy locally, be, do civil obedience locally, but with knowledge on how to build a movement. And the Senate campaigns expanded to the movement for truth, freedom and health, and they can find it on V as in Victor A. Shiva, vashiva.com. So people can sign in, they can get access to a bunch of videos. If they want to take a course and become a truth, freedom, health leader, I offer a full scholarship there. But we want people to make a commitment that they'll study, that they'll get certified, that they'll go do activities on the ground. So go to VA Shiva, Victory America Shiva, VA Shiva dot com. All right, everyone, good morning. We're talking about a chemistry professor who got fired. After 80 out of 300 students, about 20, 25% of his class whined that the class was too hard. And we're getting some great comments online, so let me uh, bring those up. Paula uh, Twitty Bushman says, you got to be kidding me. Uh, Kathleen Kent says, unreal. Kristen Falvey uh, says, pre-med is supposed to be hard. I was in pre-med and it was brutal, LOL. Um, Terry uh, Lima Rosen says, the intentional dumbing down of our society. And Kristen response says, yes, indeed. Um, uh, uh, Paula Twitty Bushman says, well, I guess my being a professor now is put ASA Marine Corps vet is tell the brats to make their happy ass out of class. OK. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Kristen Falvey says, sounds like this guy was a great professor. Organic chemistry known as the most difficult pre-med class and a lot of students don't make it. Exactly, Kristen. Um, let's see. <laughs> Naju Kalazir makes a great comment. The rise of the lumpen student. <laughs> great. Um, um, let's see. Uh, Heather says, Heather uh, Lapel Burden says, it is sad that NYU prefers to lower their standards of education than challenge their students. All right. So, the reason I wanted to talk about this is that um, organic chemistry, it, as you've noted, is the most difficult class. It's not supposed to be easy. Um, <clears throat> so why did NYU do this? Well, some of you may know that the way a university is structured, you have students, okay, who are the quote unquote customers. You have professors who have now become employees in many institutions. You have administrators whose salaries keep rising, by the way. Most professor salaries in many of these institutions has been flat. The administration salary has keep rising. In fact, there's a professor at MIT who, is, who did this whole analysis. And professors on their ID cards, at least at a place like MIT, are not called professors. They're actually called employees. And the, the other thing to recognize is that the universities get rankings. There's a U.S. News and there's different rankings. There's a U.S. News and World Report ranking or U.S. News ranking. And those rankings um, dictate um, how much tuition those universities can charge. You say higher the ranking, it's perceived as a better product. So you can increase your tuition. Um, it relates to funding. It relates to grant applications. It's all about money. The university is a corporation. And those corporations run based on how much revenue that they get in. They get revenue from tuition from students. They get revenue from grant money. They get rent, which comes from our tax dollars, which goes to the government and to them. They get uh, money from students graduating, getting jobs. They got to get big jobs. And then as alumni, they donate. Uh, the university then takes all that money. They put it into an endowment and they invest it. You see, so they have to have enough money in there because with their investments, they make more, more money. Um, in fact, at a place like Harvard, the investment fund managers were making far more of the most money, you know, tens of millions of dollars in fees that they were collecting or bonuses. So the university, you got to understand, has become fundamentally um, 
uh, a money-making, profit-making institution, but they get nonprofit status and they don't have to pay taxes. So it's a very interesting world. The deans, so you have professors, students, and then you have these deans, which manage departments. The deans are responsible for those rankings. So if the rankings go down or the students are complaining, right, the deans feel the pressure on them because their bonuses, their advancement is made on how much money they bring in. A president of a university um, is really measured on how much money they bring into that university to grow that university, okay? And we'll probably do, I should do a systems diagram at some point of, of a whole university, how it operates, so people understand how a university operates. So fundamentally, a university is a money-making machine. So now you have these students whining, and when they whine about a tough class, and in fact, if they do get a bad grade, that means they're not gonna go to medical school, okay? That means the university's rankings are gonna plummet because they have less students. First of all, the grades are less, so it's gonna bring the overall grade down. So basically they rank university departments, okay? NYU's chemistry department, NYU's engineering department, NYU's political science department. So if the students in that university, in the, in the chemistry department, are on average getting lower grades, okay, it's going to essentially lower the chemistry department's rankings. And this is what they are afraid of. And they're gonna have, if you get a D or an F or an C in organic chemistry, you're gonna reduce your chance of going to medical school. But that is, the, that is the goal. You should not be going to medical school if you do not understand uh, chemical structures. You know, if you don't, in fact, there was a, uh, uh, one of the professors, um, uh, uh, said, uh, Ken, Ken Kirschenbaum, he said, many students are having other problems. Another chemistry professor at NYU said, uh, he discovered cheating during online tests. So these are basically students who could not cut it. And then he, uh, Kirschenbaum went on to say in defense of Maitland, um, he said, um, Dr. Kirschenbaum said he, he worried about any efforts to reduce courses demands, noting that most Students in organic chemistry want to become doctors. And he said, quote, unless you appreciate these transformations at the molecular level, he said, I don't think you can be a good physician and I don't want you treating patients. So molecular transformations in organic chemistry, what you learn is, many of you know, in cytosol, we talk about these molecular pathways, right? Cytosol is the, the technology that I developed out of my PhD work. I had to understand organic chemistry, that we use that to create cytosol and cytosol helps to find new medicines and i'll play you a video of mv25 but one of the new medicines we discovered but it's fundamentally based on organic chemistry because your body when you eat something from the time it hits your mouth every process is an organic chemistry equation the enzymes in your mouth as digestion takes place all those things it's a foundation, Terry Lima Rosen said it, organic chemistry is a foundation of medicine. Thank you, Terry. It is. So you're telling these, so if you don't make that course tough and hard, right? It, and not only is it tough, it is a difficult course because you have to learn and assimilate a lot of information. So basically what NYU or the administrators who want to get their bonuses, their rankings, have basically said is we're going to lower the standards. So society, you and I are going to get shittier doctors they're already ignorant in many ways like nutrition they're going to be even more ignorant or not that competent when i went to high school i had an amazing chemistry teacher in fact i'll probably do an interview with him mr walker hopefully he's still around but mr walker held three jobs this was in high school ap chemistry he held a job as a contractor a carpenter and a chemistry because they paid so little but his classes were phenomenal one of his students ended up winning the Nobel Prize in medicine. And Mr. Walker said, I was his best student in 30 some odd years. And uh, his name was Gerald Walker. And, uh, and his, if you got, let's say the answer to an organic chemistry problem was 99.921, and you wrote 99.931, you got 10 points off. And the reason he was so harsh, and people would call him harsh, was because when in real life, if you were, you know, one one hundredths of a percentage off or one one hundredths off, you could blow up an entire bioreactor. 
Today, we have standards being lowered and you're creating students who could blow up things, all right? Or they don't care. So we're creating essentially a world of much lower standards. Perhaps they think machines will do the rest. Maybe that's a thing. Um, but the bottom line is you're creating a world where we're not going to get the services we need. And you can see it already around you. You can see if you go to a restaurant, if you go to any healthcare, the services are going down and down and down because we're reducing the concept called excellence. Mr. Walker had a high set of excellence and you met those standards and that's how you produce great things. When I was teaching at MIT, you know, I taught one of the most uh, popular courses called systems visualization, a lecture series, but systems visualization was the most popular elective at MIT. Well, one semester I gave several kids D's and F's because they didn't show up to class. They did shitty work. The administration is the one that got upset at me, okay? And the students could go badmouth me because, not because the class was bad, but because they didn't show up to class. So we're creating an environment right now. Now, look, there are bad teachers, okay? They are bad professors. Maybe they harass students, all that kind of stuff. That's in one group, but that's not what this case is. This case is about a professor who, in fact, he wrote one of the best books on organic chemistry. I think I have a, a copy of it here. Let me bring it up here. Yeah, here it is. And you can see this is one of the best books. And he's done it in a great way because he said, visualize, understand, draw, help students to move beyond memorization. You see, for years, organic chemistry is really based on memorization. And what Maitland Jones did was he created um, some really cool ways to, to learn organic chemistry without just memorization. Um, and so um, it's, it's, it's a pretty cool thing that he did actually. And it's unfortunate that he's getting vilified like this. So I rarely will go out on a limb on something like this, but I feel compelled to do this because it's really unfortunate because we're lowering standards in science, okay? Now we have also created a curriculum called Truth, Freedom and Health, Foundations of Systems. And that curriculum is about you raising your standards, you wanting to be also accountable for yourself and having some self-respect. And that system of knowledge can be found at truthfreedomhealth.com. So I want you to, when you have time, go visit truthfreedomhealth.com. But notice we say get educated to be enslaved, but we've created, we've literally, like Maitland Jones, we've created an entire course called Foundations of Systems. We give you books. We create a, tool, a software tool called Your Body, Your System. We include the Cytosol uh, findings, special lectures, a tool where you can teach others one-on-ones um, -on -ones with me. We have a whole community. Let me show this to other people here uh, on Instagram. And we allow, and then we give you lots of software tools. So we have over 360,000 students in various levels in 95 countries who've taken it. You can see the students' uh, transformation, how we've, they've changed. But fundamentally, this course, Right now, you live in a world of ignorance, like NYU, which unfortunately used to be my alma mater when I was young. Um, uh, basically, it's telling people not to see the whole. You can get away with lower levels of excellence, but with ignorance, you get to illusion, confusion, and you end up here desperate, complacent, and divided. But the other way is learning the science of systems, where you take information, you get to connect the whole. Organic chemistry is really a system science. You get to see a lot of different things. And with this, you get to wisdom and clarity. But we have created this entire course, which leads you to wisdom. And that is truth, freedom, and health. So you get, let me show you what you get. You get all the entire course. This is tens of thousands of dollars. We give, uh, we give it to you for a hundred bucks, but not only the course, but we also include books, which would cost you hundreds of dollars. It's included the, the theory paper, a very powerful piece of software, which lets you understand how your body is a system. And then we give you all the findings from Cytosol, events and special lectures. Plus you get a tool where you can teach others. You get access to me. Uh, we have a whole community. And then we also give you tools where you can educate people about system science. And then we give you a whole bunch of software tools. All of these gifts are included. And all you have to do is you just contribute right here. And you can choose whether you want to contribute 100, 25, or zero, and you get various sets of the curricula. So I wanted to share that with you. And the reason I wanted to do that is we just like 
Maitland Jones is trying to teach organic chemistry to understand the chemical reactions in the body, the Truth, Freedom and Health curriculum helps you understand how the whole, it's really the science of everything. So, and you can't just take it once. We encourage all of you to recognize that standards are being lowered. In fact, in our own course, someone will take it and they won't really get it. And we have to sort of basically bring them back the line or fire them, you know, get them out of class. But we're not going to lower standards. So if you really want to understand how the entire system works, contribute to Truth, Freedom, and Health. But today's lecture is really letting you know that when you look at the system of science, education, chemistry, we're really, really lowering the standards. And this is not a good thing. But it was organic chemistry for me. It's very personal to me because that's what I learned in AP Chemistry. It is what led me uh, through to get my PhD in biological engineering. And it would lead to the, the Cytosol invention that we recently created. And Cytosol is now using organic chemistry principles to look at nature and discover new medicines. And in fact, I'm very proud to share one of the new medicines we discovered using organic chemistry was a product where we looked at all the different bioflavonoids in nature and figured out how pain and inflammation works in your body. And we organized and we discovered using Cytosol a very powerful combination. I'll share that with you and I'll come back with some closing remarks. But MV25 is a product of organic chemistry. Millions of people suffer every day from painful discomfort and swelling, but most pain medications come with harsh side effects, and many alternative supplements have little scientific backing. That's why we at Cytosolve created MV25. MV25 was formulated using the Cytosolve Computational Systems Biology Platform, a technology for precision and personalized health invented by Dr. Shiva during his doctoral research at MIT. This formulation is the result of computing trillions of potential combinations of biomolecular interactions derived from thousands of peer-reviewed scientific papers published across four decades by 68 research institutions to discover an optimal synergy of compounds that downregulate biomarkers of discomfort and normal swelling. Hi, I'm Barbara Ann. My hands would cramp up so that I couldn't hold cards or knit or crochet. And they would go like that. Not have to use this when I played cards with my grandkids. And I'd start taking that MV25. After a bit, I was able to hold cards in my hand. Very, very little cramping, hardly at all anymore. MV25. Hi, my name is Sandy. I'm a Taekwondo instructor. I tore my ACL during Taekwondo. I had a lot of pain and limited mobility. I've been taking the MV25 for about six months now. After the first week, I noticed a big difference. After the second week, almost literally no pain. My name is Jeremy and I suffer from a lower back problem. Hurt my back at work years ago and I can go to the chiropractor, do all kinds of different things and nothing seems to help. And I decided to try MV25. I didn't notice a difference immediately, but within a few days, the pain went away and it stayed away. I've continued to take it. And even when I do things that I shouldn't do, it seems to go away a lot quicker than it ever did before. MV25 is certified clean, 100% non-GMO, made in America and GMP certified for good manufacturing practices. MV25 is Cytosol optimized which means that this formula has been engineered to maximize benefits while minimizing toxicity based on current research curated by Cytosolve. As the science advances, so will this formulation. This is our promise. Order online at mv25.life. Consult your doctor before taking any supplement or medication and use as directed. MV25. All right, as we close out today, um, let me just uh, finish up some interesting comments. People are saying these are great comments that people are posting. Uh, Susie Lusa, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Suresh says, the bottom line is world is degenerating. Only way out is a bottoms up movement with right education, action, community. Everyone can do a little every day. Please uh, come to Dr. Shiva's open house. Right, and by the way, the open house 
Let me, uh, we have an open house every Thursday. So we have one coming up this Thursday. Let me share, share that with you guys. That's right here at 11 a.m. Um, uh, uh, EDT or 8 p.m. EDT or EST. And you just have to RSVP at vashiva.com slash orientation. Let me just take this away so you can see it. Thanks, Suresh. Um, uh, uh, Full Bloom says chemistry is not too hard. The school just wants pre-med students to fail so they can pay for their class again, double the profit. Maybe that's another one. Uh, well, in this case, I think they're giving the students a chance to withdraw and take it again. Um, Bill Green said, this is the exact thinking that will keep us out uh, of the new world order. And what, what, what Bill is saying is he put, posted a previous one. He said, Dr. Shivi, speak uh, such a great truth that it's amazing people aren't picking up on your story. Well, people are. About a quarter of a billion people know about our movement, and they're out there. We have 360,000 people join us. Thanks, Bill, for your comment. Um, uh, Helena Davis says, the elites want us to become idiots so they can control us. There's a solution to this nonsense. Go to vashiva.com slash orientation. Definitely. Um, uh, Stephen Hickson says, we find healing and medicines in nature, but Big Pharma will copy the chemical structure and then copyright. Yep. So we have lots and lots of, uh, and Stephen says, thank you. You're welcome. Um, uh, uh, so here's one, uh, Sarita Uday Singh says, my teacher teaching Krebs cycle, which is uh, one of the equations you learn in organic chemistry, one of the pathways, no one understand anything at all. All students except me complain. So next class, I was the only one attending class, respect your gurus. That's a great one. So. Basically, we have an environment, I think I'll end on this note, is that we have an en environment where when you lower standards, no one knows the difference between excellence and idiots, okay? So in sports, for example, if you and I look up and you look at a Michael Jordan or Shaquille O'Neal or whatever that is, you can't tell the differences, but among them, because they're like the gurus of basketball, they can tell the difference who's wearing you know, who's different. We have created a world right now where no one can tell the difference between someone who really knows this subject and who doesn't. In the apprentice system of electricians or plumbers, you have the master plumber, you have a junior, you have the apprentice. You know very clearly people respect not the hierarchy, but people respect knowledge. You see, the hierarchy somehow took over the knowledge. And this is not a good thing. So when I hire people, you'll see the same thing. I hire young people. They think they know it all, but they know shit. And I have to basically, and some of them, many of them don't last in, in an environment where I'm trying to raise excellence and that's fine, they can leave. But those who do, they actually start recognizing that they're unconscious incompetence, which is a good place to be when you recognize that you're an unconscious incompetence. If you can recognize that, then you become a conscious incompetent. But we have a lot of unconscious incompetence running around. People who don't even know their incompetency and they think they know it all. This is a very dangerous society. And that's what this is really about. This firing of this professor shows a major university wants to create more unconscious incompetence. So think about that. Anyway, uh, it's very disappointing. But the good news is we have our movement, Truth, Freedom, Health. We don't lower our standards in our education. So if you want to really get educated and not be enslaved, go to Truth, Freedom, and Health. We have an entire community. We have education. And you can really learn the science of everything and the foundations of systems. So I hope all of you take advantage of that and uh, you know uh, give yourself that gift. Thank you everyone, be well.